uh, really honored to be able to speak on this topic, and I have a certain personal interest, as Jim just said. I was at the NVER New York in uh, part of its heyday in the, uh, in the development of human capital for the first three years of my academic career and participated in some of these seminars. But I actually would have a slight, not a quarrel, but suggestion for improvement of this paper. And that is, I think, if you really wanted to organize a session about the NBER history, I think you might better organize it by the creative individuals who, who really built these programs. We already talked about Kuznets and Burns and Friedman. If you go forward, I think the retrospect would be better organized around the creators rather than around certain programs that exist at this point. Uh, and I think, to be honest, that in this particular paper, not in the other papers in the session, the paper on human capital is mistitled. The reason why it's mistitled is that NVR was not an incubator. An incubator is actually a controlled environment that nourishes the growth of organisms. You can look it up on Wikipedia or whatever. In the truth, I think the human capital group at NVER revolutionized it by combining both theory and data to explore a really big problem. And we heard already in the previous presentations that many in the NBR group were very interested and very, very clear in collecting honest, useful data that would be above any kind of suspicion. So I would argue that there was a kind of revolution and that any incubation, if it was, was basically by people like Juster and Victor Hughes who funded some of this work and, and singled out a brilliant scholar like Becker and also Mincer. So I think the novelty was, was that it was just not in the data analyzed, but in the theory that organized diverse data across fields. And it really brought theory to the analysis of data in a way that really wasn't common at the NBER. We even heard that in the discussion of the monetary theory. So the second point I'd like to make is that the human capital in the a Golden Cat's paper is a little bit conflated with Becker's creative agenda. I mean, everything that Becker did is now called human capital. <laughs> uh, the paper starts off by defining it as an investment. But if you look at it, and I think the, the, true, the true way to recognize the, the goal here is that Becker uh, really was a fundamentally original thinker. He created a lot of ideas, and he created them in this matrix. And I, I think the one thing that really is missing in the paper is the role of the Columbia Labor Economics Workshop, which I think was symbiotic with the Bureau. I mean, the, because of Burns, Burns was at Columbia, and then, of course, at, uh, at the NBER, they did have this relationship, and it was the case that scholars in the NBER, a lot of them with appointments there, working with grants and so forth, were also Columbia faculty, and then later, City University of New York faculty. But I say, I single out Columbia because there are a lot of people, a whole cadre of PhD students who were fleshed out papers that built on and extended the becker menzer framework. So Becker had a great impact, and it was across all these fields that are still active at the NBER, fertility, time allocation, human capital. I'm not sure you want to call it all human capital, but I think since 72, when Schultz wrote an essay for the Bureau, these things have been conflated in some way. So I would try to clarify that, and also try to understand and clarify the role of, the, uh, of, of some of these sister organizations. I would also go back to Milton Friedman, if I can for a minute, uh, Milton Friedman played a crucial role in a lot of the work that's discussed that we've heard about that. But there are links that are interesting to make and that should be made. Friedman was an undergrad at Rutgers and he was a research assistant to Arthur Burns, who was his teacher, and that's a link. Burns was working on his PhD thesis under Mitchell and one of his RAs was nonetheless Milton Friedman. So Friedman was actually right there at the beginning working on business cycle research. As an RA to Kuznets, he created income from independent professional practice. And I, I believe the theoretical work in that book is really due to Milton Friedman. Also, a lot of the work of Henry Schultz's theory of demand is due to Milton Friedman. But the point is, is this book, as has already been mentioned, played a fundamental role. I, Claudia was right that the notion of general versus specific capital, permanent versus transitory income, the modern methods for the analysis of panel data, was a huge inspiration for much subsequent work. And I think it was actually a prototype of what later became Friedman's methodology of positive economics. Now, there was a mention of a delay in the publication of the paper. <laughs> but I think it's a creative delay. It was a good delay in some sense. 
because the, the, the person who had the delay was C. Reinhold Noyes, who was a Reader's Digest, right? Now, he, he had an objection, but it's a very modern objection. And it's an objection that's still held up to this day, namely ability bias. He was, and Friedman was saying the high return to being a physician in the U.S. was really due to the fact they had invested and created essentially human capital. And Reinhold Noyes basically pointed out, well, look, it could also be ability bias, and you better settle this more clearly. And I think that's an honest, uh, I think it's good. It's in the bureau tradition to kind of insist on those high standards of, of evidence. And uh, Friedman played a role, you know, defending uh, against uh, Koopmans, uh, Burns and Mitchell, and he even wrote a paper about Wesley Clare Mitchell as an economic theorist. So these people had a heavy influence on what later became the, Net, the Bureau Project. Uh, I would also mention Stigler, not only in the sense of his work on I.O. and rates of return, but his work on search theory It was later in this famous 62 JPE volume. Now coming to Becker, there's no denying that Becker played a, a tremendous uh, role, a, a crucial role not only in the sense of creating ideas, a vast array of ideas, but he built on Friedman's methodology of positive economics in his work. Namely, he was using multiple sources, he was using what might be called a narrative approach along with a quantitative approach. And I think he was very, very, uh, uh, he implemented these, these Friedman principles in a very productive way. And of course, he created this, this masterpiece about that put together in a way that Friedman's research program wanted people to put together a theory that had direct application to the original problem being considered, which was did the U.S. underinvest or overinvest in human capital, but also had a lot of other auxiliary implications. So that was his notion of testing a theory and then looking at its multiple implications. So Becker's range of interest spawned a number of programs, a number of fields are across economics. Crime, law, economics, earnings, inequality, uh, health. A lot of these grew out of the Becker workshop and the people working with Becker. But nonetheless, I'm not sure I'd call them all human capital. I think so. I think you'd want to differentiate Becker from human capital, although it's hard. It certainly there is a difference. There was one other group that I think might be mentioned when you look at NBER in New York, and that was the work by, uh, and the group led by Finus Welch at City University. It's already been mentioned in one of the papers that Finus was the first, had the first NBER working paper in the modern series. But I think uh, he played an enormous role at the, in, at the New York NBER. And he, he, along, it was, he was a separate force. He brought a lot of young people together, <coughs> people like Smith and Willis and others, and, and, uh, he coordinated the NBER work with the work at City University. It was a second pole of research. So I would argue that this is a good paper, it's an interesting paper, it has a lot of interesting facts. Talks about human capital, it's not, I think it needs a clear definition of human capital. And if you want to talk about the work of Gary Becker, there's a lot to say, and I would definitely say that's great. And if you want to say that NBER has benefited a lot from Gary Becker. I would say that's true, and a lot of the rest of the world has. But I think it's really important, though, to think about uh, some of these other sources, just historically, and also to recognize that with a lot of the cadre. So it seems to me the last part of the paper, the last few periods, I guess they, I guess you'd call it the Feldstein period and so forth, is a little different uh, in the sense that you these programs, these ideas, they weren't fully formalized, but you know, people like in law and economics, Bill Landis, a Becker student from the Columbia Labor Workshop, mm -hmm. uh, Mike Grossman, who is a student of Becker at the Columbia Labor Economics Workshop. These people actually uh, were spawned by this group. They, many of them stayed associated with the NBER, some left. So I think I would, I would separate them. I, I'm not sure that NBER was so much an incubator in the sense that I gave, at least the technical definition. But I think it really played a very powerful role. It financed these people. And there were people, some of the project administrators who aren't really that well known today. Vic Fuchs is known. Tom Juster uh, is known to many people who work on certain kinds of longitudinal data, but maybe not so well known. So I, I would talk, sort of clarify this, but I do think it's a good paper. And I think that uh, the, the NBER really has carried on the Becker vision. I guess I'd be more upfront and say it's more Becker mm -hmm. than just human capital. Great, thank you. So.